Today I'm talking with Elaine Grieve, who is the Lord Lieutenant of Orkney. And we are accompanied today by Freddie, we your sure canine are. friend whom I've come to know and love over the last <laughs> wee while. Uh, thanks for agreeing to have a wee chat, Elaine. My pleasure, uh, It'll Liz. be uh, great to hear what you have to say. I understand that this role goes back to about 1547. Yes. And from around 1715 until 1948, mm -hmm. it was shared with Shetland. It was indeed, yeah. And there's obviously quite a bit of a history involved. Can you maybe tell us what the role entails and how it's maybe changed over almost 500 years? I will try. I think originally um, Lord Lieutenants were known as the King's Men because they were predominantly male, mm -hmm. you know, way back then, and to a certain extent still today. And essentially, the, the Lord Lieutenant was the King's representative in each county. And if anything went wrong, Liz, the Lord Lieutenant had the power to gather men together to fight in the King's name. Okay. So I guess that kind of explains its militaristic history, the notion of the uniform and, you know, all of these things yes. that make you think of it being part of an armed force. And as you say, for the first, oh, you know, goodly while, Orkney and Shetland were connected together, much as they are today in, in, mm -hmm. in kind of Member of Parliament terms. But um, we then became um, independent in lieutenancy terms. And ever since then, we've had our own Lord Lieutenants. And until the last Lord Lieutenant, they were all men. And then here I am. <laughs> It, you it, it. are the first female Lord Lieutenant of Orkney and you're recently appointed Vice Lord Lieutenant, right. Dr Sarah Scarf, that's yes. obviously also a, a female. Mm -hmm. What is that saying about the role of Lord Lieutenant and for women today in general? I think for, for the Lieutenancy, I was enormously proud, you know, to be the first woman in the role in Orkney and, and to be Lord Lieutenant, male or female, is a huge honour. Uh -huh. It's an appointment by the Queen. So, you know, it was hugely significant for me personally and I could have made any number of choices or gone any number of roads in determining how I wanted the Lieutenancy team to be shaped and ultimately, I want the Lieutenancy team in Orkney to be shaped to reflect the society in which we live. You know, women aren't a minority group. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> Certainly not. And um, it was in part a conscious decision to appoint a female Vice Lord Lieutenant. We worked together in preparation of a concert uh, on the 100th anniversary of Armistice. And we got on famously well, and we, we, we almost could read each other's moves. We, we understood the need to delegate. We told each other when we thought it was nonsense, and we praised each other when we thought it was great. So, I mean, that's the mark of a good mm -hmm. working relationship, and that was the thing that was important to me. But I think, what does it say about women today? It says that we're not quite there if we've got to make statements such as these about yes. what does it mean to be a woman. Yes. But equally, I firmly believe that men and women are different, obviously, mm -hmm. and we bring different things to a table. We bring different skill sets, but we can do jobs that are similar equally well and sometimes maybe even a pretty bit better. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> um, how does one become a Lord Lieutenant and what kind of background and experience do you, do you actually need to be mm. successful at the role, okay. male or female, I suppose. Well, indeed. Ultimately, you are nominated for the role, nominated uh, by occasionally the, the Lord Lieutenant who's about to leave the role or the lieutenancy that he has headed up, or it could be somebody saying that person would make mm -hmm. a really good Lord Lieutenant. In my case, I had been the Vice Lord Lieutenant um, and I was asked by the Lord Lieutenant, would I consider supporting his nomination that I be considered for the role? And initially I thought, oh, I don't know about this. <laughs> because Bill had done it so well. Hello, Freddie. Bill had done it so well 
And I just thought, it's a big ask. But then I thought, maybe this is the time for me to do something really out with my comfort zone mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. you know, I would be the first woman in the role and basically however I shaped it would be noted. So there was a bit about, you know, damp dampening down that self-doubt and then just thinking, yeah, I could do that. I could do that. Maybe could I? Yes, I think I could. So I said to Bill, I said, well, it would be an enormous honour uh, to be considered for the role and if you want to progress my nomination I'd be delighted to be considered. And so has your nomination progressed to uh, the Queen for approval? <laughs> but um, yes it, there's a series of hoops before uh, the, the nomination is presented to Her Majesty and Her Majesty never approves of anybody she just doesn't disapprove Disapp and her non-disapproval disapproval non-disapproval would that be correct came back positively and I was appointed to the role. So you've been appointed to the role. What is the role and what does it entail? Well, in some respects, it hasn't really changed an awful lot since way back when. Mm -hmm. Although now the Lord Lieutenant, thankfully, will not be called upon to gather together what would have to be an equally balanced group of people to fight <laughs> in the monarch's name. <laughs> that bit has gone. But essentially you are the monarch's representative in your county. Mm -hmm. So if the monarch has a question about what's going on in Orkney, I would be the person who would be asked by the team. And it's about things like, for example, on a day-to-day -day basis, helping people in this community celebrate wonderful events, like memorable birthdays, mm -hmm memorable anniversaries that's such a joy because you get to front up with a bunch of flowers and a card a cup of tea speak about you know how did you manage to survive a marriage this long what's your secret <laughs> you know things of that nature so that's that's joyous and then you, you have the more kind of solemn occasions the ceremonials where remembrance sunday and um, the the anniversary of the loss of the royal oak d day v e day Armed Forces days. Long hope, I Long recall having spent hope. a month in, in South mm -hmm. Walls. Indeed, Vagaland. Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, and being quite close to some of the people that were involved in that yeah. and yeah. seeing the photographs in the church that I was uh, taking the services in, the Queen Mother attending, Princess mm -hmm. Anne. And I think that, you know, aside from um, being the Queen's representative, you also have the absolute joy of welcoming members of the royal family to your community. And that of itself is 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 quite an in-depth task. It's not just a question, we'll be here next Tuesday. You know, it's, okay. it's slightly more complex than that. Give, give us a wee bit of insight into the complexities of organising a royal visit. I mean, we recently had yeah. William and Kate yes. on Orkney. Yes, um, so well, well, I could use I could use that as an example. Um, Planning and preparation for a visit happens months and months in advance. As you can imagine, mm -hmm. members of the royal family have very full calendars <coughs> of visits because they, they work extremely hard and they visit all over what is essentially the kingdom. So months in advance, a contact will be made by the relevant member of the royal family's household mm -hmm. and they will advise us that the the uh, Royal Highness, whoever it is, would like to make a visit to Orkney and roughly in this time frame. So you'll get that to start with. And it generally comes with either a statement that they want to visit something or speak with some body okay. or another, yeah. or they want to come and just have a general, you know, refresh visit with the county. So we knew in um, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge or the Earl and Countess of Strathairn, as they are yep. in Scotland, that they wanted to come very much as part of a, on, an almost a church visit because he was, you, you know, very much at that time working as the High Commissioner for the Church of Scotland. Yep. So... He came up and part of it was they wanted to visit with people who were connected with the church. So we had that to organise. We also had a long-standing 
request with members of the royal family to formally open the hospital. So we knew that that was an element. Mm -hmm. We also knew from the household themselves that the Earl of Strathairn in particular was very, very interested in renewable energy. So that gave us another strand. None of those elements at all were difficult to organise mm -hmm. once we knew the kind of menu. Okay. Yep. And once you know the menu, it's all about setting up the connections. And then, given that that was in COVID times, there are... Zoom meetings and team meetings with the household to determine timings. And then before the event, you'll have a, a, a recce visit mm -hmm. where members of the team will come and basically walk the route with you so that they're aware of what's likely to be seen there and, you, you know, how long it'll take and are there any hurdles to be overtaken and so on and so yes. forth. And then before you know it, you're on the visit day. And if you're a new Lord Lieutenant and this is your first <laughs> first basic, you, you know, big appointment, then your heart is in your mouth. I can and imagine. you're standing at the airport thinking, what do I say? How, I knew how to, you know, introduce myself and I knew the protocol. And it was just an absolute delight because the Royal Highness has bounced off the helicopter and just said, hello. <laughs> and it was an absolute delight. Joy. Excellent. So <laughs> your first big encounter was quite a success. I hope so. <laughs> well, judging by the, the coverage in the, the local media, um, I think yeah. it, it probably was. It so. was tremendous. And yes. all down to a group of nursery kids who were not actually invited, were just out on one of these toon strolls, as we would say, yes. doing the pier to see the boats. And they were actually walking away. And I said to one of our organising group, I said, oh, get them back, get them back, you know, because this will be such fun for them. And it was, it was, it was uh, a, a mini highlight during the day. I seem to recall something from the media that, did, did one of the children not say, are you a princess or something? <laughs> to... I think looked at, looked at the Duchess and said, are you the prince? Ah, is that what it was? <laughs> and she said, no. My name, I think, from memory, she said, my name is Catherine, but some people call me Kate, which was so sweet for yeah. the wee soul. Yeah, and, and that's something they'll probably remember for well, a long, long time. Well, I hope so, I hope so. Even though they were really, really peedy and tiny, you know, if they can hold on to that, or at least their parents keep forcing the recall of that for the future queen to have had that encounter with them, yeah. I think that's really special. Could I maybe ask a wee favour? A lot of people listening... Well, have no idea what PD means. Oh, PD, for those not on the couch, <laughs> PD means small, tiny, and we use it all the time. So, you know, this is a PD couch <laughs> with two folk and a dog that's clearly quite happy. So PD means small. Are there any more memorable moments that you can share of any of your visits or activities? Anything stand out for you as yeah. something you really, really enjoyed or something you thought... Well, I hope that doesn't happen again. <laughs> Fortunately, I haven't had any of those. Oh, I hope those don't happen again, and oh, they're bound to come. But I, I, I suppose for me, the most memorable would be when I was in the role of Vice Lord Lieutenant, mm -hmm. and that was the year of the 50th commemoration of the loss of the Long Hope lifeboat. Um, Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal, is a patron of the Long Hope Lifeboat Museum. Mm -hmm. And she was to have visited on the actual anniversary in March, but right. couldn't come. And one of the main things that we wanted to do, Uten Long Hope, was for her to have the opportunity to talk to the widows. Yes. Who still remained. So she agreed to come back in the September of that year, which would have been 2019. Yes, 2019. And she did just to visit the museum and to have time with the widows. Now that, for me, was such a human response uh -huh, uh -huh. to a situation. Y y you know, the Princess Royal works so incredibly hard and visits so many places. And here she was in Long Hope, at the Long Hope Lifeboat Museum, loads of people you know, they are wanting a small room 
kind of off the main part of the museum, no door, just room enough for four chairs, five chairs. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Princess Royal came in, I entered the room and I said, Your Royal Highness, may I present? And I went round the room and I introduced her to the remaining widows. And then I said, Your Royal Highness, if you would like to take a seat. And I just walked away and I stood outside and I couldn't help, no door, so I couldn't help but, but hear some of the conversation. Yeah. And it was hugely personal. It was hugely supportive, Her Royal Highness. Really sympathised and empathised with, with what they had gone through and asked them a lot about their times with their families before uh -huh, uh -huh. the event. And, you know, to say that I was standing there with a lump in my throat would not have been an exaggeration because it was such a touching moment that um, I'll never forget it. You know, it doesn't matter what, I do from here on yes. in but and it was made all the more poignant because two weeks after that visit very very sadly one of the widows passed away and that I think is one of the reasons that that it it, it sits so beautifully with me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. beautifully heavily with me if that makes any sense it does yes because they both had that experience her royal highness had the experience and the widow had that experience it's wonderful and it just it, it, it meant a huge amount as Lord Lieutenant, I believe you have a uniform. Oh, I do. <laughs> and a ceremonial sword. I do. Which is this That's very it. sword sitting behind us. And um, we'll take it down in a wee bit of time later and show you a bit more detail about that. But can you talk us through your, your uniform and... Do you always wear a uniform mm. when you're on events or is there some other kind of insignia you'd maybe mm -hmm. wear with a nice mm -hmm. dress or something mm -hmm. like that? Or just to designate you as the Lord Lieutenant yes. in the situation that you're in? Yes. Well, it's a new thing for the female Lord Lieutenants because, you, you know, male Lord Lieutenants have worn a uniform, well, ever since, I guess, goodness knows when. I couldn't tell you when. How, how many female Lord Lieutenants are there? Do oh, you know? gosh, there's a question. Well, across the UK, there are 98 lieutenancies. Now, there won't be, half of those won't be women, but I think it's, you know, increasingly, it, it, it's growing all the time. Okay. So we're not quite half. Yes, last year, there was no uniform for female Lord Lieutenants. Okay. Now, that of itself, you know, was a wee bit of, oh, I feel the Equalities Act creeping <laughs> up behind me. You know, that there was a bit of that. Yes. Um, and there was an issue that needed to be squared out, shall we say? So those who are um, in the executive of the Association of Lord Lieutenants, because mm -hmm. there is a, an Association of Lord Lieutenants, they said that, yes, we needed to have a uniform for women and it would have to go to design because to wear exactly the same uniform as the men, it really wouldn't have worked because it was, you, you know, the male jacket we didn't have the right cut, Liz, you know, and the oh, pockets absolutely. were in the wrong place and it needed to be a little bit more feminine. So anyway, the, the, the sketches were made, the, 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 the design was agreed. And then during 2020, female order of tenants were given the choice as to whether or not they wanted to wear the uniform. Mm -hmm. And... The very great majority, I think, have elected to have the uniform. Well, it saves you worrying about what to wear, oh, otherwise, well, doesn't it? <laughs> you would think. Although the uniform is generally only worn on ceremonial occasions. Okay. So if I was, oh, what would be an example of me perhaps not wearing the uniform? Now I can't even think of one of those. Visiting somebody on a birthday, big birthday, or a wedding yes, anniversary? Yes, although birthday. I might ask them, would they like me to wear the uniform okay. for their own family photographs? But of course. in that situation, you might not. But certainly for things like you know, remembrance events, certainly if you were um, welcoming Her Majesty to the county, always in uniform. Other members of the royal family... Generally, you would ask the household, do you uh, wish yes. for me to wear the uniform or is it like a more casual kind of a visit? Because right, it can okay. be quite imposing. And 
as female Lord Lieutenants, before the uniform came into play, we had a, a badge, which again we can have a look at later when we're looking at the ceremonial sword. And if, for example, it was a dinner, then I might wear, you know, the insignia. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't go to a dinner. Hopefully I wouldn't go to a dinner in uniform, but then you'd never know. <laughs> The sword is manageable, but it does take a little bit of engineering this way and that. So, yes, the uniform is new to women. And I have to say, it it, it does elevate the situation. Yes, I can understand that. If you're standing there in your best coat with a badge on, you, you would tend to be lost in the crowd. Uh -huh. But if you're standing there in complete with a cap and the epaulets and everything, you'd you can be seen and recognised as being somebody who's obviously got a job to do. <laughs>